Again, this is Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery in the backyard. Working on part two of an 18 by 24 inch canvas with some schmutz that I think I ought to fix. Um, and some paint bottles I better move out of the way. And I have beautiful paint I'm working out of. That's an old iPod box, something that came in. And uh, I started this with just puddles of white pearl and adding ver variations on a theme, which were a couple of rings which don't look like rings anymore, and scoops, which will probably happen again in a minute. Let me see if I can... Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. We'll set it on 17, that way we won't lose you too quickly. And I can tell you all the pesty things I tell you usually. All right, I like that. Not at all. So I'm gonna cover it with something. Oh, look at the cells right in my scoop. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> all right. I got lots of cells. I'm going to hold my hand there over the end of the scoop. I've been using paint from my squeeze bottles already pre-mixed pre up as usual with Floetrol instead of pouring medium or Decor pouring medium because I found a sale at Hobby Lobby and I bought some. Or um, and, I should say and, I always use GAC 800 by Golden because I like to leave my paint thick and keep the patterns. And um, hopefully I don't change anything too radically, but this is about tipping, this particular piece. It's about tipping and it's supposed to be about um, keeping the black negative space and allowing it to, to stay, which is not as easy as you might think when you're trying to tip. So when I started, for those of you who are new and just finding this, when I started, yeah, brain cramp. <laughs> Never mind, I'll figure it out in a minute. Um, it's hard to work and talk. It just is, especially when things are this cool, because I'm happy with this. This is pretty neat. And uh, I have all kinds of things I can play with, like skewers, that I haven't played with anything, really. I have beads and chains and all kinds of stuff, and I haven't, haven't done that. And I want to continue on where I was going. And that's terribly convenient because there's a whole line of drips there. Maybe we'll just use an edge catcher. Can we get there quick enough? Oh, it's got paint all over it. And now it's all over me. I rock my edge catchers back and forth to cover the edges. And that one's going to get clean because I'm cleaning my hands. I can't do I can't use a black canvas with paint on my hands. I have to be careful. I'm going to try and dry them too for a moment. Hopefully you can see most of that. It's really a tall order to get an 18 by 24 inch canvas so you can see it all and I can work on it all. I'm loving the white. I really am loving the white pearl and uh, I'm going to try and remember to keep using it as opposed to replacing it by accident with the, my not white pearl. So if I go from this end that should mean that I can tip in the opposite direction from the direction I've been in and I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing. Oh. That is a thin mix, that white pearl. I do use Floetrol often to thin my mix. I don't. I also don't use silicone in my mix because the Floetrol seems to be a selling agent for me. Um, I don't know that everyone has that ability and a lot of people are probably pretty happy using silicone spray. I used to use um, Blaster and CRC spray and I still have a bottle of uh, treadmill silicone drops, but it's very heavy. It's, it's uh, similar to dimethicone in its heaviness. Dimethicone being the, um, the coconut milk hair serum and stuff. I'm going to try and push this up far enough so you can see. And these colors are just tremendous. Look at those patterns. They're just fantastic. And so I'm really liking my little iPod container. have to live with whatever drips over the edge. So I'm going to pull that back right now. I 
I keep thinking I'll be using up my paint anytime soon, but then I don't. I just keep adding more because that's what I love to do. But as long as the colors aren't getting muddy, I'm not unhappy with what I've got. They are a little muddy right now, but I can always add more paint to that. All right, so that's going to run this way. And then I'm going to put it... I'm going to bring an edge catcher out. Oop, that one has paint on it. There's a lot of them down here. So I always have one. I'm trying to keep the paint off my hands. Let that run down. And then I'm going to let it pool and flow right back onto the canvas and create a rivulet or swallow that area. <laughs> I don't have a choice. You can't have it all, but you can make the best of it. All right, so that's pretty cool. I'm not unhappy with that, and there's only this one area left. Or I could probably just add dots of dab, dots and dabs. Let's do some dots and see what happens. That has some really beautiful little cells in it, so I'm kind of interested to see if I can leave a puddle without it becoming a problem. I'm going to try my hardest to, um, you know what? I just love the colors, so I guess I'm just going to add my scoop of colors and let it slowly drain onto the canvas. And put some somewhat organic shapes in there, and I can always add some more dots. And if I get the scoop, the flat edge, close enough to the edge of my canvas, I can drip it over and create a somewhat cohesive design that looks like it belongs. Don't mind that it's gray or brown. It sort of makes a nice contrast, and I am always using metallics, so I'm not too worried about that. I can add something on top of it if I hate it, so I'm not too worried about that either. Excuse me. It's nice to throw a few anomalous, strange little patterns in places just to make things crank them up a little bit. I really want to put something over here, but I'm not sure I need it as bad as I want it. I'm going to try and grab some more beautiful colors. I hope they stay beautiful. <laughs> this didn't turn out to be a puddle pour in any way, shape, or form, but that's okay, because I like it in any case. Let's I can puddle pour now though, <laughs> and maybe, just maybe, grab something cool to put in it, and tip it back carefully. I think, since we're on a roll already, and I want this to come this way, but I'm going to add paint there, and I'm going to also try and grab yet another edge catcher. I'm going to be inundated with edge catchers pretty quick here. I want that to go that way. And I want the paint to pool. And throw it back on. Squeeze it over. And hope I can find a place to hang on to. Oops. <laughs> I just lost some cool stuff. Oh well, never mind. I can't squeeze that back very easily because I'm just balancing this canvas. Oh, and my edge catcher, catcher keep going on the sandy rubber mats in my studio. But um, we're pretty close to being where I'd like to be. With the possible exception of adding a few colors from squeeze bottles. 
which doesn't really hurt my feelings either. It means I can have what I want, where I want it, when I want it. Always good in my opinion. Well, for the most part. <laughs> I don't know if orange will stay orange on a black canvas. I don't know much about this technique at all because it's my first time trying it exactly like this. I mean, I've probably done variations on this before. I'd like to give myself all the time I need to play to make something really awesome. We haven't torched. That might be a really good thing to do now. I want to play with the black first, though. I want to do this. And that's okay. Do I want to do something else to it? That's the question. I'm not sure. I don't hate that. I do think if I want it to stay, I'm going to have to edge it with some more white. And I have my white pearl. think up a few things. I've got plenty of paint to dip my skewer into. Should I decide to do that? And I never know what I'm going to get out of there if I, if I do that. But that's okay. I think a few dots places are always good for me. Maybe not everyone. But I like them. And other people seem to not mind them either. <laughs> so I'm not alone. And I am just dipping my skewer in and quickly releasing the dots so they sort of are graduated. And if I dip it in and double it up, I can get a much larger dot. I try and find something with white in it. I think if I use the, the flat, the dull end, I'll be much luckier. Up a lot more paint like that. I don't know what possessed me, but I love that I'm picking up all different colors. Sorry, I'm quiet. Sometimes I need to think. I wasn't expecting to make a garden scene, but that's okay, because I kind of like it. 
I like using the colors that I have over here too. Especially when they turn out to be so pretty. As I put them down. And just a little spiral around. I don't know how many more I need though. I'm kind of having too much fun. <laughs> Again. Shame on her. Not really. But the nice thing about the dots is I can camouflage anything that I'm not super, super happy seeing. And they don't have to be in any specific order. They can be floating random objects. Or objects that don't seem to be so random. Which are not bothering me a bit. I'm loving using my skewer to just add, add more texture, layers, definition, what do you want to call it? Um, I'm just having fun. And there's a, quite a bit of um, folk art color shift paint in, in batches in, in my paints. The green is. There's some blue that is. It's kind of been around a while, so I don't really know. I like that graduated backwards. I was watching a YouTube video of somebody making amazing mandalas. And I guess I'm inspired. have some fun of my own. So I'm going to have two minutes in a second to tell you whatever it is I haven't told you already, which I've probably told you a million times unless you're new, in which case I'll start with there are like 350 videos. So if you like what you see, watch some more. That's my timer. That tells me I've got two minutes left max. Oh, and some very dirty looking paint that I think I'm just going to try and pour somewhere onto another canvas and have some fun with and call it good. Um, I'm happy with what I've got here. It was a nice experiment. I'm going to torch really quickly. Tell you to look for the uh, the albums, volumes 1, 2, and probably 3 from the YouTube artworks that are at the bottom of the description. They're Facebook albums. You can follow the link. There's also Pinterest and Instagram links right there in the same place. The description for my paint pouring recipe is inside the description of the video, below the video, along with, like I said, PayPal and Patreon. If you donate, you'll be entered in a contest to win one, a th choice of one of three paintings. I'm assuming I'm going to do the contest again because it did actually recover the cost of the artwork I'm offering up, and that's pretty nice. The studio needs all the help it can get. And you guys are very helpful, and I appreciate the contributions I've had already very much. And I want to say thank you to everybody who contributes by commenting. I really need a thumbs up from you guys, please. If you like my work, and you like what I do, and my experiments, and my play, please give me a thumbs up. It helps my standing in YouTube, and gets my videos seen by more people. It's a big deal. So torching hasn't made that much difference, but we torch to get rid of the bubbles in the paint. When it sh gets shaken up, we get bubbles and they will dry in the drying paint and then they will leave little craters and you don't want that. Also, if you have a bucket where you clean your tools, throw your water into a bucket of sand and let it harden and get rid of it after that because if you throw it down the pipes in your house, you will not be happy at all. Not at all, because it coats your pipes. Um, I'm pretty well done with this. 
So I want to say this is Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery saying thank you for coming. Hope you come again. Enjoy.